Well, Andre and David, you know, they're law students. I, I, well, the two of them just kind of started this. They were law students and they were frustrated. As my understanding of what happened was that they, they, they wanted to do something different. They wanted to kind of change their place. And they decided to buy, get involved. They bought the Queen Mom first and there was nothing going on there. Anyway, they, they were clever enough to be supportive of the community. They became very involved in the community. And through their involvement in the community and by being a part of that community, they became um, landmarks within the community. You know, they developed a, a, a strong historical presence in that community. But in the beginning, I think what they, what they were what they wanted to do, I think it was just a couple of guys that wanted to open up a restaurant, you know, because they didn't want to be lawyers, basically. But it turned into this whole other thing. And they, you Which know, is still going. It's still going. And then they got Benny Pa. Well, the food came from mostly Benny Pa and her, and her extended family, who one by one came over and escaped. From Vietnam. From Vietnam. And Benny Pock could cook. And Andre somehow, or David, I think probably Andre, somehow made contact with, with Benny Pock and got her to cook. And she started working in the kitchen. I guess she needed a job or whatever. I don't know what the details were. But. So somewhere along the line, then, then that, that whole sort of Loatian cooking thing became a trademark for the Rivoli. And I think at that time there wasn't anybody that was doing that kind of cooking really in Toronto. The spring rolls and the pad thai, like they had pad thai before I'd ever even heard of it. Well, she started at the Queen Mom and then she moved when they bought the Rivoli, or when they opened the Rivoli later, she moved to the Rivoli. I mean, and, and but the interesting thing to me is that it was not a con I don't think the Rivoli was ever to be a contrived there was no wasn't it wasn't a place that was established to be a contrived hip place to hang out. It was a place that evolved through a process and the process I find quite interesting. Because the process, as I understand it, basically came from a couple of lawyers who never practiced law or very shortly if they very briefly if they did at all. And they, got, and they got this whole thing, and it just kind of launched into its own... Uh, Mom opened, I think, probably three years, three or four years before the Revolution. About in what year? I'm guessing, but I'd probably say maybe 79, 78, somewhere in there. 85? I was a waiter. I started as a waiter at the Revolution, and then I was a bartender, and then I became night manager for a while. Yeah, I think, to me, the, the, the interest, I mean, the, the thing that's of interest to me is just sort of the history of how it came to be, you know, like it, it wasn't a contrived, planned event, it was, it was spontaneous. There's manufactured conditions, and I think there's conditions that just kind of evolved naturally based on, you know, the, the, the politics and the geography and the economics of what's going on at the time, you know. Queen Street was... There was a lot of places available to live in. It was accessible. The property was cheap. You know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah.